Hi guys, Jamie from PMR and it's part two of the Tronics Envoy Mag review. I have been down and I've cast this and I'm going to revise my 7 out of 10 to a 6 out of 10. I shall go through the reasons with you very shortly and we'll also look at be waiting with bated breath to see the next lot of reels that come in how they change and how they upgrade and update. As you can see I've put crown screws on so I could get into the reel. So I'll talk about the problems first. I've already heard that uh, a pseudo journalist had destroyed a one of these when casting it because the mag braking system basically caught on the spool. Well bottom line is I've left this like this to start with so if I do this uh, you can hear that, can't you? That is rubbing on the mag system. Now the reason for that is because if you look, I've got the spool too far to the left. Now, if I alter this and I actually get this in the middle, there you go. There's how it would be. That would be exactly the same if you had a mono mag. You would still have to center the spool and set the mag so that your spool and the mag do not meet and um, apparently somebody put some line on it went to have a test blew the thing up because they hadn't centered it and they made a bit of a mess mm. the muppets born every day oh well never mind okay so my first gripe is the fact that uh, it's like a mono mag that uh, the mag does get a little bit too close to the spool on this side um, and when it does and it because it breaks against this bit here, when I say breaks, it rests against this piece on the outside of the cage here to stop it, but the inside of that piece of the cage, and that's its stop when it's in the full outward position. Would be nice if there was a stop and it had a stop before it hits the inside of the cage here. The other thing is that plus is actually minus and minus is plus, so when you've got it turned all the way around to the plus, it's actually all the way out and when you wind it back for the minus it is all the way into the spool so they they kind of didn't quite get that one right but hey it's a, a very small misdemeanor really okay a little bit of a spin test thing as well making sure that the spool is kind of as as loose as I can possibly get it when I did the spin test before, and I have to show you this, so this is with the mag on plus, which means the mag is all the way out, and you give it up. And it spins for a little while. And then if you put the mag, which is to the minus, which is all the way in, it stops a little bit quicker, but there's not a lot in it. Now I think the reason for that is as you can see the bearings on this and that's free running and not so free running and I've cast this about 20 odd times and I've given it what I like to call as a lead abuse. So let's get down to the nitties and gritties of this. Now I had crown screws on uh, um, a CB50 of her, which costs about a third of the price of this, or a quarter of the price of something like that. Um, it really is ridiculously cheap. But um, when I undid the uh, crown screws and had to take the side plate off, there were loads of bit that, bits that still kind of fell out. Now, one of the nice things is, when you pull it out, nothing's going to fall out. Okay. And if uh, you pull the side plate off and something falls out, then you've done something seriously wrong and you haven't sorted the reel out before you started casting. Might be a good idea for you to do that. So, um, what I was saying before is that this part here, there's a, there's a, get that back in, there is a lip here, just there. And that lip stops against this lip here around here. So where the uh, spool is, if it comes too far this way or too far that way, 
it will rub on here. Secondly, the magnetic braking system as is, um, I thought there was going to be oodles of braking because there are so many magnets, but um, in actual fact, I've come to the conclusion there's not as much braking as there could be because there are too many magnets working against each other. Because you've got these three here, four here. You have another four underneath there, as if you've watched part one you've seen. There's a magnet here, there's a magnet here, and there's magnets underneath them. Although these magnet here and this magnet here are specifically for a maglev design. In other words, they hold it in place when you turn it down. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see a stop in the cam here. And I'd like to see a couple of shafts coming up where these two, plast uh, two magnets are rather than the magnets just have a shaft that slides up and down and then bigger magnets in here rather than lots of magnets with less surface area that not so sure it's doing the job although as I say doing the spin test with the magnet on and the magnet off I'm only spinning it with my finger so it's not the, the spool's not creating as a stronger magnetic field as it would do when it's in the cast and spinning much faster um, so, question mark on that one. The second thing that I noticed is that I am not so sure that the spool, you can see it's been used because of the oil that's in there now, the spool didn't seem to be as well balanced as I thought it was. There was vibration in the cast. Now, this might not be the spool, as I've since found out, because taking it apart, if I show you the brake blocks you can see that although there are eight brake blocks three of them are still white and the others you can see even that one there's um, engaged at the moment it shouldn't be because I shut them all off so this one this one this one this one and this one they've re-engaged now I actually put this one and this one out so I had two brake blocks when I was casting for an over, over the head thump but I did not activate these. Unfortunately, it seems that you've really got to push these in very hard to stop them from sliding out and activating. A little bit of a shame, because it means that if you're paranoid, you're forever checking them. And it explains why I was only hitting sort of 100, 110 when I was giving it a good wallop, even though the bearings are not particularly good on this thing I would have thought 140 would have been just with a lead would have been more the case looking at the uh, at the spool here you can see that there is no rubbing so that gets a plus and uh, apart from the fact that the spool was not as balanced as I would have liked and there was a bit of vibration the other thing is the um, centrifugal brake blocks engaging themselves when you don't want them to although that's not necessarily a good thing because the other things I can tell you there was no line trap and I'm using 0.32 16 or 18 pound Sukuma something like that but it's 0.32 I know that and it's Sukuma no line trap whatsoever no flex from the cage winding in and winding in and winding in I was in a place where there were the tide was running out so I was catching a lot of weed. The reel seemed very strong and it did wind in the handle. Love the handle. I really do like the handle on this thing. It's not bad at all. So I think the biggest issue really is the brake system. I think it's uh, in a teething situation and the idea is good and novel and it's different but may have to be tweaked a bit before it becomes a decent system. I think that personally we need some big 3mm thick bearing, uh, there you go, bearings again, magnets here rather than having this maglev system. I think that should be made a bit more uh, manual. But if people don't try new things wouldn't the world be an incredibly boring place? I personally would like to see that mag system being sorted so that it does actually work as designed. I think that that's maybe 12 months away. 
But at the end of the day, this is a £50 reel. Now, if you want to see how it casts, I'm going to put this back together. Take a look at this. Hi guys, it's Jamie from PMR. This is twice in one year in front of the camera, but another new reel that has to be checked out. So we're going to do it. The reel is the Tronix Envoy Mag. There's an Envoy Mag, there is an Envoy without a mag, and there is a level one, which I think is the Concorde, but I haven't opened those boxes yet. Now, uh, the rod, as you can see, is an Aspire. 130M, my beast, and uh, if uh, you've seen the videos, my face is here, if you've seen the video of the Ahur, uh, you'll know that uh, when I blasted out the 5 ounce, we pretty much destroyed the wheel because when I took it apart, it's not very happy, but it was an 18, 19 pound reel. Um, this is something a bit different. Um, this is a, an entry level decent reel around about the 50 pound mark so I thought it was only fair that I came and um, I, I chucked lead so three ounce then a four ounce then a five ounce I'm going to do an over the head thump and then maybe we'll do a little half pendulum I'm not going to do a full pendulum because I don't get to last week do a full pendulum sun today is a little bit of a pain because it's kind of seven o'clock in the evening so camera person's going to have to go and stand over there rather than standing over there and in case you're wondering why I always come down here this is the one place that nobody can see me casting. Right, so we've now put two, engaged two centrifugal brake blocks uh, over the head thumb. Three ounce. Oh. Okay, a little bit of a birdie because I wasn't paying attention and didn't put my thumb down on the uh, on the reel at the end of the cast. Uh, got rid of that used about a third of a reel so if this thing takes 250 meters I chuck that about 85 shall we say um, the line is uh, 0.32 18 or 16 I can't remember which pound Sakuma red crystal um, one of the other things I'm noticing about this reel is that unlike the uh, Ahua when it's under pressure I'm uh, pulling line in, uh, the uh, spindle and spool are staying where they're supposed to, they're not moving, and in general, the tree, especially with this hand, it's very nice. Okay, uh, five ounce lead, you're going to say consistency, different colour t-shirt, I'm going to say the battery went fat on my camera last night, me bad, so I've had to come down again this morning because I really want to give this reel, this one, a workout and I only got to cast it a couple of times with the five ounce last night so I'm going to give it hell on various different casts this morning and before I sign off and say it's any good, hence different t-shirt, the other one smelt didn't pass the sniff test this morning right one thing I will tell you about this reel I love this handle this handle is well balanced it's good to use and I think people are going to be robbing them for their Abus their Akios and their Daiwa 7HTs right I'm going to start off again this morning with over the head thumps Last one. 
Okay, I will tell you guys that uh, I have abused this reel. I have really abused this reel as I'm cranking in because the lead's in the mud. It will do the job. There you go. Keeps everything central. Gears are good. Handles are good. Everything's good. The only thing that I'm not overly fond of is the mag braking system. But it is a new mag braking system, so uh, loads of room for improvement. And I would expect over the next year or so that uh, various different versions will come out. There'll only be a mono mag on this if there's not a, a, a standard mag because bearings are in the end caps. Apart from that, I have to say that although I do love to pick faults and things, um, I really couldn't find any fault with that. The, the only fault I could see was my casting. But hey, I'm the engineer, not the, not the caster. So, uh, we'll have to see what happens, but um, it passes the lead abuse with flying colours. I'll see you back in the studio, i.e. my lounge table. Well, now you've seen how it casts, you've seen me abuse it. I'm going to give it six and a half, actually, out of ten. Because although the mag system is a little bit of a question mark, and this is also really, I think this is the bit I hate most, is that button. The mag system can be sorted, it's that button that needs to be done. And a question mark about the foot plate at the back, but then again, the rest of the cage is excellent. The side plates, they're very bright, they're very nice. The handle is balanced, it is a lovely handle. And it really is not bad for 50 quid. I'm looking forward to taking the uh, Envoy Mag, non, uh, sorry, the Envoy non Mag, and I'm going to stick a, a nice big mono mag in it, and I'm going to put some hybrid ceramic bearings on it, and we'll give it a spin test, and we'll give that a throw, and we'll see where we get with that one. In the meantime, I'm going to stick with six and a half out of ten. It's got to lose half a point because the the mag system is a little dire. When I say that, I also have to add to that that if you're a first time buyer and you're not paying a hundred pounds for an Akios mag or a hundred and twenty pounds for an Abu mag which is basically in the same class as this or um, the same size Daiwa 7HT would be the Daiwa 7HT mag which I believe starts at about 180 quid this only costs 50 quid and if you're starting out or you want to back up and you don't have a massive budget it's not bad and one more time I do also have to say you can change the bearings in this you can take the mag out and remag it and put a mono mag in it and just in general for the price yeah I really can't fault it that much I mean, if you buy a hundred pound or a ninety-nine pound Abu, you get some oil, but you don't get one of these, and the oil thing is not going to last much longer because of the um, carrying oil on a plane, which is why you can't get the Abu oiler anymore. Mm. So, six and a half out of ten. I'll make the. Uh, uh, I'll do the uh, the Envoy, standard Envoy next week and I shall give that abuse and in the meantime this is going to go in my tackle box and I'm going to fish with it on a, an extra rod I'm going to put this out and I'm going to see what it does over the next couple of months what I'm not going to do is wash it I'm going to abuse it and see how badly it fares when it's abused in the meantime I'm Jamie Thank you for watching PMR Pit Mario. We'll see you next time.